Real Sound. I'm Michelle Graves, your host on today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm glad to have you here. Now, at The Power of Money, we are interested in three things happening. First, we want you to get the necessary education so that you and your family can make the decisions that will impact positively on you in your financial life. The second thing is that you be empowered to prosper. I only want the best for you. And you can only get that if you have education and then the drive to make it happen. And the third thing that is so important to me is that you recognize that life is more than a journey and that you be energized so that you can begin to participate in the truly joyous experience of living. So, here's to empowerment, here's to education, and here's to energy. I'm Michelle Graves, your host, Power of Money. And welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, affectionately known for the last 40 years as the money lady, both locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. And of course, I encourage everyone that's dialing in today to listen and to learn and to be educated so that your families and you can get through this incredible time in history. Never, and I do say never, have we seen anything so absolutely and totally chaotic and bizarre. And if you think that I can tell you things are going to get better anytime soon, my answer is an emphatic no. I don't see that happening. I've said it on previous episodes. I've talked about this for a long, long time, both on this show as well as my other venues, including radio. And despite all of the naysayers and all the people that, have, that are delusional, I will just have to say, you are delusional. And that goes all the way up the top on the Fed side as well as on the government side. Somebody needs to get boots on the ground with regard to what is going on in our economy. As we look at today's date, June the 14th, 2022, here is a summary of what has transpired so that you will get a clarity and so that you'll be able to see the same picture I'm looking at. And I don't say this prejudicially to any of you. I am by training and background an international economist, okay? I'm also in the field of science as a biochemist. So I'm real analytical in how I look at things and how I come to conclusions. I don't just wing it and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. What I will say is that the facts would lead us to certain conclusions. Now, it's completely interpretive, and I'll be blunt with everybody, of how you view the facts. Because if your filtering is based on media, if your filtering is based on opinions and family dialogue and friend dialogue, you may have a very different perspective and come to very different conclusions than what I have. But my methodology, so all of you will know and understand, is that I look at time, I look at history, I look at all events that are taking place now, I look at global issues. Oh yeah, I'm checking everything out on a regular and consistent basis because that's what I've done for 40 plus years. I, I have. So when I said to all of you, and for those of you that don't keep up, with my stuff, and that's okay, I'm not offended, but you can go to YouTube and you can look up the Power of Money, Michelle Graves, Stagflation. I did two shows months ago on this situation we're dealing with right now. I told you what inflation was, what it looked like, why it was truly the, such a horrible, horrible occurrence that it has destroyed economies completely economies 
people like to talk about, oh, we'll get past this. But again, as I share with everyone, you may get past it and you will probably get through it, but you won't be the same person that you were when you started out this journey. There's just too many variables and too many situations that are going to challenge your sanity, literally challenge. So I'm going to do on today's show, we're going to do an update, an update, June 14th, 2022, where I'm going to kind of bring you fast forward again to why we are here today and what you as a thoughtful and conscientious listener can do to begin to address your family so that you do not go into panic mode when this thing really, really, really slams down. And trust me when I tell you, uh, with the market off 800 points, and now we're looking at the bear market, all those fancy terms mean the stock market does not have confidence and our ability to get through this in the short term. And that's going to impact on you, your money, your debt, and possibly your livelihood. For real. This is no play play, as the kids would say. But so I'm going to take you back and we're going to kind of look and see where things are and have been and are going. Two years ago, maybe three years ago, prior to COVID, I noted some things that were not good with regard to the balance of trade, with regard to China. Oh yeah, everybody's all up in arms about China. China's been on this trajectory for a long time. Why? Because their vision is world domination. They feel that is their inherent right. Their mission is to bring everyone into subjection to their vision. And that includes market domination. That includes military domination. Oh yeah. It includes um, many things that we pass over, a, a way of life that is very, very orchestrated and decidedly autocratic. Don't, don't get it confused. They've been on this for a long time. But three years ago, I began observing some very disturbing trends and relationship and how they were responding to our concerns about goods and services, price points, currencies. This is not new, but three years ago is when I began to really, really kind of zoom in on that. And again, I, I must say I'm a little prejudiced because I did live over there uh, some time ago. But again, you have to be in that culture to really understand that they are not like the United States of America, nor do they process information the same way. Do not. Trust me, 2,000 years, we're a young country. 2,000 years, they've seen a lot. They've seen a lot. And so they're not going to be moved by a whole lot. They're going to stake their claim and they're going to go forward. Now, we move on to 2020 when COVID uh, emerged as the black swan, as I will say. People say, what's the black swan? And I said, it is a term that was um, promulgated by a very, very wise and knowledgeable economist regarding phenomena that we did not anticipate nor prepare for that has the effect of just throwing things into pandemonium. Uh, for example, uh, the Black Plague in Europe that pushed Europe into the Dark Ages for a long, long time. Now, did everybody stop functioning because Europe was going through what they were? No, people went on. Africa and Asia continued to trade and transact. But it did have an impact, a long, long impact on the religious order in Europe, specifically the Catholicism. It had a major impact on how people lived. 
the eruption of the volcano in Vesuvius was another black swan that people didn't anticipate the entire uh, Pompeian people gone. That's major. That's cataclysmic. So those are some examples. Um, I would venture to say that Pearl Harbor was a black swan. Now, the difference here is that Japan was very aware of what they were going to be doing to us. We were not aware that they were going to do it through faulty intelligence, etc. And boom, it happened. And it was destructive. And it changed the balance of power globally. It dragged the United States, who was a third party, look the other way, uh, country, baby country into a massive world catastrophe that did not end in a couple of weeks, but it dragged on and on and on, decimating our men, um, warriors, all of that globally. It was cataclysmic, okay? And then you add in Germany, and then you really got something going on for a long time. As a result of that black swan, the order of global relations changed. The U.S. emerged as the winner and in a position to dominate how goods and services were transacted globally, to set the standard with the dollar. All of these things happened because of a specific event that had a specific impact. Now let's fast forward. We're now into COVID. COVID showed its ugly head, ugly head, uh, in, in January of 2020. Yeah, can you believe it's been that long that we've been dealing with this thing? Now, was COVID new? No, it was not. It was a part of the SARS virus uh, family. And this one, however, was different. And while scientists had predicted in times past the coming of a COVID type of virus, Nobody anticipated the violence that it entered into the scene. And as a result, you're talking about millions of people contracting it and then dying. You talk about population uh, control. Man, that thing came on and it shut down everything. It was not anticipated. It was not um, we didn't have resources to address it, and all we did, and if you look back, all we did was finger point. We finger pointed Wuhan in China. We finger pointed China. We finger pointed everyone rather than looking at an occurrence that was so cataclysmic and upended relationships globally that we did not have a proper response. We did not. People took to the streets, people took to internet, all this garbage, all this garbage. And then rather than look at, is there any possibility that our government may have been involved in this complicity? We know that Wuhan is in China, but scientists interface with each other all over the world. Is it possible if there was any blame to be laid and if it was even a merit? What does it matter to point a finger when you're the one heading to the grave? I mean, for real. Isn't a more mature response perhaps is to identify sources and how to prevent the further spread? Doesn't that make sense? rather than behave like children in a sandbox and throwing dirt and sand. You did it, you did it. The reality is that as humans, the black swan was here and it was killing and making people very, very sick. And it still is. Predictably, because it has mutant qualities, it's now on, I don't know what variation it's on now, but it's back again, because as I've shared with people, the proper response has never really been identified, and therefore people will continue to die. I don't care whether you're an anti-masker 
or you wear a mask. I wear a mask, an N95, and because I know that this thing is in the air. If, you, if you're around people that have gotten sick, there's a different scent in the air. And if you smell it once, you won't forget it. It's just a very, very unpleasant scent. It's not heavy, but it's in the air, right. And a mask is absolutely ma mandatory, but I would also suggest that because it's in the air and it goes into portals, meaning your nose, your mouth, your eyes, your ears, uh, that the mask is just basic and all the other coverings should be there as well. Just as a basic, not doing anything greater. Social distancing, of course, because if somebody is sneezing behind you and they have it, then you might contract it. For real, it's just that basic. So as I tell people in America, do whatever. This is a democratic country. You can do whatever, but just know that that black swan that showed up was not predicted, was not, um, people did not know outcomes, and that the scientific community was struggling just like everybody else to identify source, outcome, and uh, strategies to reduce exposure. Very simple, okay? Americans, wake up, follow the rules, take care of your family, stay, stay away from sick people, period. Just, just stay away, okay? Because there's nothing you can do if you contract it from a sick person, okay? Long haulers will tell you this. Those are people that didn't get well. They didn't die, but they didn't get well. So this thing keeps coming back and back and back, okay? while the virus identifies other potential hosts. Because the reality is that it's looking for a host. Why? So it can re replicate and have babies. And, and, and ultimately, the host that dies is no longer a viable host, and they move on, okay? They, unlike cancer, which dies with its host, this thing moves on. And, and it's just, from a science perspective, it's just awful. It is so awful. But that was a black swan. Are there other black swans that have emerged from that? Yeah, yeah, there are. Um, a black swan that we did not anticipate as we speak was Russia attacking Ukraine. That was 100 plus days ago. Why? I, the truth of the matter is, I have no idea, period, other than they wanted to subjugate Ukraine. They were talking about and continue to talk about this Nazi piece of, of, of concentration in Ukraine and wanting to decimate it. Uh, but the reality was, that was a black swan because it was not anticipated. We did not have proper response to it. And people got very emotional because the media got involved showing. The, they showed it as it was. War is ugly. War, ask the soldiers from uh, the desert storm and the intense uh, dust storms and World War II and Vietnam, which is my generation where you never trusted anybody. And our soldiers came back to a horrible welcome. Right, because we were like, they need to have their own destiny. D yeah, and that is absolutely correct. However, soldiers don't have a say as to where they get sent. When they sign up for military, they, get, they become the property of the US government with the president as their commander in chief and they get assigned anywhere. But we treated them badly. No jobs, no respect, no anything. That's why I did a, an event last year honoring our African-American veterans because I thought it was an absolute uh, disgrace 
that we would not acknowledge the service of African-American soldiers, including GI Bill, as well as home ownership. Disgraceful. So before you get off on this tirade about our country, our country, again, it's all about your filter and the information you have available. Some people have no information. Therefore, they're subject to the opinions and the interpretations of others, including the media. They may be anti-government for whatever reason, but I would hope that you would recognize that the United States is still a constitutionally driven country. It is also a country that has laws and has elections honorably and um, believes in people doing better. I, I believe that, okay? If you don't believe that, live in another country and find out what they believe and find out what they look at when they look at this country over here, for, for real. Because today, the information is so free, if you want to, you can, you can dial up all kinds of information, objective, skewed, whatever you want. But the reality is, it is the filtering that will determine your opinion and your outlook. And my challenge as we talk about inflation on this show today, that you will recognize that inflation is not a new kid on the block. Economists all shudder at the thought of what it does to a country. It will eat you alive in front of your face. It will deprive you of food that you can no longer afford. It will affect your ability to live in housing because you cannot make the payments on the housing, whether you're buying a home or whether you're renting a home. It has that impact. Now, going back to Russia and Ukraine, because this is a part of inflation that, sorry, you can't point a finger at Joe Biden about what is happening with Valdemar Putin, okay? Russia is an aggressive, dominating force globally. The USSR, which was its pre predecessor, after the Bolshevik Revolution, uh, where the kingdom was blown up and we had communism show up and all of these nation states came together as a union of Soviet socialist republics. All of them were up under one order. Please remember that because that is the way that they lived their life. The Soviet Union suffered horribly under World War II. And they had some leaders that were just scary, including Stalin, who killed three million of his own people rather than let the Germans kill him. Now you got to understand, these are all next door neighbors. Okay, it's like Ohio and Kentucky or Pennsylvania and New York. These are all people that live next to each other and probably relatives and kin folks that have migrated and done it, etc. This is not a fixed situation. Everybody knows how Russia is. Everybody but us. Everybody knows their character. Everybody knows uh, what they've had to deal with. It's a huge country. Pull out your map and look at that country. Just Russia, it's got all kinds of ethnic groups. It's got all kinds of weather patterns, but it's also heavily concentrated with oil and gas. And since our world system is based upon oil and gas, then you need to know that is going to be an issue. Leverage, period. You need what we got, so settle down. Oh, you want to be principled? well then freeze to death in the winter or don't drive cars or trucks or other means of transportation including ships okay that need diesel so you've got that as a black swan because russia is bent on destroying ukraine 
A lot of it, people say it's because Ukraine was a part of Mother Russia. That's fine, but the reality is that Ukraine is the breadbasket for a large part of the world, including our fertilizer in the United States. Yes, we have to use fertilizer to help the plants kind of get a story, okay, including corn in Ohio, all right? Don't even talk to me about what farmers are going through right now. Between the climate-driven weather, the heat, and now no nutrients, come on. The drought in the West, California, which we thought was a breadbasket, but not with no water. You got to have water. So again, what's the impact of that particular black swan that showed up? We couldn't have predicted it. We couldn't have predicted that this would still be going on 105 plus days after it started. Nobody could have. Nobody, but I will share with you openly without, don't throw rocks at me. I didn't write the story. I'm not over there. I'm not boots on the ground. I'm just an observer looking at it. And I'm saying to you that the absence of a critical commodity as oil and gas is going to cause a real stirring up globally. Does it have impact over here? Not as much as in Europe. And again, Asia's ecstatic because China needs oil, lots of it, because they got two billion people. They need oil. So don't expect their politic to be much of anything. They don't have a comment because they're trying to build a world order, okay? They don't care who's fighting. They'll be pleasant because that's their culture, okay? But they are looking strongly at all that oil that we're not going to be getting because they need it and they're going to get it. I'm, I'm just telling you, they, they are, they are. It's not like they have a buddy relationship with Russia, but business, business trumps friendship. Okay. So because of that issue, it's putting a great press on demand and demand has a great push on price. So, you see situations now where even though we bought little from them, we bought enough from them uh, to create a problem, along with Venezuela, which we're trying to work out those politics. Okay, but I'm trying to say to all of you, all of this push is impacting price. And because in America, because we've been locked up and in quarantine, People want to get loose and free, and they want to drive. And I'm going to tell you something. As I said predictably a year ago, I predict gas is going to go up to $9.99 a gallon. People were like, what? What's this based on? I said, demand. We printed all this money. We gave all this stimulus money to everybody when the truth of the matter is, the printing of the money should have been restricted to those who are poor, those who are on fixed income like seniors and on some type of government support like Medicaid. Those people should have got the money because they needed it and because we know as economists that money would immediately have been spent. But because our country had no clue as to how to get out of this situation that COVID brought to the table, which is people were sick, people were dying, companies could not sustain. Everything started blowing up all over the world. China, which we import so much, their people sick, really, to the point of shutdown and quarantine. All of this has impact. So in America, the poor, do what they're supposed to do. We know this as, as, as financial professionals. They're going to spend that money 
because they got to live because you're not giving them enough money to sustain. So they got to spend the money. And yeah, it's not going to be to pay bills. It's going to be to buy food. It's going to be to pay for daycare for their children. It's going to be to buy gas to try to limp up the road to their jobs. Okay, and if they have a job because companies started furloughing and letting go thousands of people because they were in panic mode. They didn't have a strategy for coming out of this phenomena. What do we do? Everybody's dying. Well, I'm not going to tell you what you can do because looking back, it's always easy. It's moving forward that's going to be the challenge as this thing continues to linger. But let's talk about its impact on inflation and how Russia and Ukraine is all a part of that story as well. And let's not neglect China, but don't get it twisted. China has its own agenda and it has nothing to do with you or I. It has what they call manifest destiny. It is their destiny as the dragon to dominate and control the world. And they've done an awesome job in Africa because they have settled in with resources, etc. You know, Africa has all of the resources. Europe has very little resources, okay? And you've got your Middle East and your other areas. But they worked out deals. They got the resources. Why? Because you can't dominate if you don't control resources, okay? You can't. Sorry. Um, are they over here? Well, they dominate us in terms of goods and services. They worked that piece. They said, no, we don't have to have bauxite. We don't have to have all that. But we're going to make you dependent upon us because we're going to lower the price where your greed factor is going to kick in and you're going to buy all this stuff from us. Garbage. I'm not kidding you. A toy truck cannot pay a bill. All right? Cannot. All right? Your dress cannot pay a bill. And they knew that, so they worked a plan. The ships were all theirs anyway. Excuse me. Um, and so here we are. So we've got Russia, and again, in Europe, they're trying to scuttle working this out. They said, we're not going to buy their oil. And I said, well, you're going to have a cold winter, okay, because it gets cold over there and wet in England. You're going to have a problem. But if you want to play ball with them, play ball. You already know how they are. Germany definitely knows how they are, right next door neighbors. Others do as well. World War II impacted all of Europe parts of Africa, parts of Asia, the Pacific, they know, they know. So the catch is, are you going to wiggle your tail at the devil? <laughs> did I just say that? Yes, I did. And what are you really going to do? And what's the economic impact of your countries who are dependent upon stability of gas resources as well as the climate, which is all over the place, okay, all over the place, all over the place, uh, because we have not been kind to Mother Earth. We have not been kind in terms of emissions. And so here we are as a global, a global society. So the poor spent their stimulus money. The elderly spent their stimulus money for the most part because most of them are dependent upon Social Security. It wasn't designed to be like that, but it has emerged like that thanks to the, um, what can I say? A 401k is never going to meet the requirements of a pension. Ever. Ever. You can fund it for days. A 401k will never meet the guarantees that a pension offered and that's gone. Yeah. So people don't even have that venue with any level of predictability and given what's happening in the stock market, you better be looking at your 401k, okay? And you better be moving your money in that instrument 
into something that is safe and guaranteed like treasuries or governies. Yeah, I said it because I'm not an optimist when it comes to business. I'm looking at the facts. I'm looking at something I had talked about some time ago, which is if you don't know what a 401k is and you're putting money there, please take the time to read the contract to see what the opportunities are and to see if you even have the freedom to move your money within that account into something that is guaranteed. Oh, but I won't make any money. Excuse me, what goes up must come down. Who sang that song? I can't even remember them, but that was my generation. Market's down, gonna be down, gonna be down. So what is the Fed gonna do? And what does inflation look like? Well, you have the middle class who got their checks and they did not spend their money. They didn't need it. They were doing okay. Not great, but not desperate and destitute. They were okay. So they put their money in the bank and guess what? They're now spending their money, okay? They're spending their money. The poor have no money. The middle class are spending their money and it's starting to get a little bit pressed because the statistics say that credit card usage is going up. Why? Because they're running out of money and they're using credit cards to carry them. That does have an end story, by the way. That does. That has an end story. But that's what the middle class are doing. Now, the super rich and the rich, well, they don't care. They never got stimulus, but they did. Their businesses got mega dollars. But then personally, no. So they don't really care. They're going to do what they want to do. Try to go to Mars. Try to go to the moon. Try to get the heck up out of here. Okay? But the impact of this right now, of inflation, is going to be to split our country into two groups, the haves and the have-nots. And it's also going to be the same behavior globally, the haves and the have-nots. The have-nots are going to look eerily familiar, which are countries in Africa, and Asia, where people have been dependent upon the United Nations, food banks, etc., for food. And because Ukraine cannot export these foods, yeah, Ukraine's a, the food basket, they cannot export the wheat and the grains because they're dealing with blockades by the Russians, then these people will not have food and they are already starting to starve. Okay, now in the United States, we as a affluent country don't have it quite like that, but I am telling you it's on its way. Why can I say that with confidence? Well, you'd have to be from Mars not to see what the uh, grocery stores look like, the shelves look like, the prices look like. Don't buy red meat, okay? You're going to see all of that, and it's going to intensify. Why? Because, again, the demand is greater than the supply. And why is the demand? All these people that have money and need these things, and they can't get them. So supply, because truckers can't truck them affordably enough. Right, because they got to fill up a truck with seven dollar diesel to try to transport your vegetables and your other things not going to happen long term truckers are taking a beating and they're only bidding for goods and services that can again make them money right they should be paid but how does it impact on us well what is done to everybody at least in my estimation over here, is what inflation does. It makes everybody paranoid, which is, I better get it all now, and I better get it at this price, because next week it could be another price, and next week, certainly in the gas industry, we started off at $2.59, and now we're looking at $6.59. And no, you can't stockpile gasoline, 
uh, you can, but I would not recommend it from a safety perspective. So people are going through it. I mean, they really are. And they're two extremes. And I said this, I came back from Charlotte, North Carolina, where I had the pleasure of being a part of a black farmers conference at North Carolina Agriculture and Technical University, where I met and uh, talked to and interface with remarkable, remarkable people, the farmers. And let me tell you something as a sidebar. That's hard work. Oh, to grow a tomato or to grow a basil and provide it for everybody else, that is hard work, nonstop. And then you got to get it transported. And then you got to get all your equipment paid because you got all these deer, John Deere trucks and stuff, and that's money and it has to be paid. And John Deere is not sympathetic to whether you're making tomatoes okay. You got to step it up and grow something. So again, I didn't want to get sidebarred, but I will tell you after coming from that conference, I left with not only a healthy respect for farming, but for a real real, real eye-opener that we got to get our stuff together over here like now. Now, let me say to you right now, 90% of the farmland is controlled by farm conglomerates that don't give a hoot about you, GMOs, and everything else. They run it. But I'm hopeful, prayerful even, that throughout all of this, we will begin to see the resurgence of the smaller farmer, the organic foods, that's right, the organic foods that are healthy foods, not foods that have been modified and upped to keep you diabetic prone and overweight and everything else. Oh yeah, there's a cost to all this stuff. But I say all this because over here in America, we are also dealing with the repercussions and ramifications of inflation that are a result, again, of demand, of not having enough workers, I mean, you know it, of not having uh, enough of anything, and that's causing a push on price, and prices are going up. Are prices coming down? Well, according to Procter & Gamble, no, not with their stuff. <laughs> um, Dollar Tree, I should call it Dollar 25 Cent Tree. I don't think so. Nobody is going to bear the burden of inflation except the American consumer because this country is driven, 80% of our economy is based upon the American consumer. And unless we change our buying habits, things are just gonna continue to go up. Now, halt, stop it, money lady. The government is officially involved, which would be the case because anytime you have rampant inflation, you have the possibility, probability, of a lot of unrest as people can't eat. Think French Revolution, okay? Think, people don't have food to eat, people don't know how to grow food, people aren't working and making the money they need to work, make so your lower income, your working people are going to get snarky. So the government says, we must do something about this. We cannot have the stock market in a flame, people frustrated and upset, children hungry. Speaking of which, I don't even want to talk about the formula situation because that's going to really make me mad, okay? Because that was something they created. But that's my opinion based upon the data I reviewed, okay? Women need to be throwing their bottles at Congress baby bottles. So we are now at a point where people have to make some hard decisions. And the Federal Reserve, uh, the government used monetary policy, which is they printed money and they threw it into the economy in the form of stimulus checks to try to ratch up people's spending and buying. Okay, that's the reason you got the check, was for you to spend money that the government had printed utilizing monetary policy, uh, uh, fiscal policy specifically, not monetary, that's the Fed. Fiscal policy, which is we're gonna do this. Then you flip over to the Fed, which is a 
quasi-private banking organization that basically runs the money, okay? Because under monetary policy, that one of the keys is to raise interest rates. Why? Because if you raise interest rates high enough, you're going to cool off the economy. How does raising interest rates cool off the economy? Well, raising interest rates, and because they run the banking system, okay, through Office of Control of Currency, they basically say we're going to raise interest rates to a point where you as a business owner are not going to be willing to spend money to get more goods and services to press out to your consumers. You're not going to want to expand your factories because you got to borrow money to do that. And that's going to cost you because that's what the bank is guided by the Fed. Okay, in addition to the bank, because that's no joke, and I tell people all the time, the bank in America and the bank globally runs the show. Them and insurance companies. Yes, they do. The bank determines based on interest rate and your balance sheet whether they can lend you money. And if so, what interest rate? Because it's going to cost you to borrow money. That's the key thing. It's going to cost you the debt factor is real with the Fed right now. It, the goal is to keep everything controlled. And so companies, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to have to lay off people. Why? Because they cannot expand to meet demand. They cannot afford the interest rate variable that the Fed has now pushed onto the bank. What impact is that on us as consumers? Well, you have credit cards, which is debt. And that credit card is issued by the bank. And if you will read your statement, you will see that the bank has the authority to raise rates on your card. And you're like, but it's killing me now. Oh, it's not killing you like it's going to kill you, okay? Debt is bad news in any world system. Having to pay people money from your money, which means you have less money, is always a bad deal. In the United States, we have perfected the art of debt because you not only have your credit card debt, but you can buy a car on debt They'll finance it through a number of venues, but it's going to cost you now to buy a car if you can get one because parts are a problem because of international disequilibrium, starting with China. And, but a car is going to cost you an interest. You're going to pay for the interest, okay? You are. So what do they do to make it more palatable? Instead of a five-year loan, which is ridiculous, you can now go up to seven years and probably not to stretch the payments out so they are lower, but over the long haul, because interest rates are higher, you will pay a whole lot more for your car. That's something simple. For other types of debt, again, all debt centers around the bank. All right? The bank. Okay? I did not say the credit union. The credit union is not a bank. A bank is under Office of Controller of Currency. It is a part of the federal system, and it has compliance requirements and tons of things that you don't want to know about because it's just too much. But suffice it to say that the Federal Reserve, and they've done this one other time, and that was under uh, President Ronald Reagan, 1981 and 82, if I remember, the Fed did this to get a hold of inflation, which was starting to fan. And the rest is history. We went into a recession, people lost jobs, and again, because inflation will destroy a nation. And the Fed has said, oh, no, 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 we're not going to have any of this. We're going to tighten up. And we're going to tighten up 
until the data that we get shows that businesses are not growing, that consumers are backing down. You know, it was a minute where banks were extending all kinds of credit offers to people with perfect credit. Well, that's getting ready to change because people are not going to have perfect credit. Why? Because they're struggling to pay what they got, and on the income they got, they're not going to be able to have perfect credit. So the offers for credit are getting ready to shrink, which is fine with the Fed because they don't want you to have that kind of money out there anyway. Credit cards represent money, whether it's a cash advance or whether you're just spending on stuff or whether you're buying gas. It still represents money, cash, right. And they're going to deal with that because they're going to deal with inflation. And do I believe we're going into a recession? I said that months ago. I said, tighten up your ranks. Look at your family situation. Do not spend money on things that you do not have. Don't do it. Don't get lured in on the marketing game because it's a game and you're it. Tag, you're it. So back it up. What to do? Sit down and look at what you need to keep things going and pull it together as a family. Kind of reminiscent of the Waltons. You know, everybody lived there. You say, I can't live with my mother. Oh, yes, you can. You can live with your mother. You can live with your brother who's a grump bag. You can live with your sister who's a tightwad. You can all live and get along because it's about survival. And I will say this over and over and over again, because I haven't talked about the other black swan, which I'm going to talk about in my next show, which is mental illness. On top of everything else, now tons of people, including young people, are crazy as Betsy bugs and subject to do terrible things because a sick mind has no boundaries, okay? And we must deal with that. We really must deal with that as a reality. Not with guns, but with people. Because a sick brain is what it is. So I'm wrapping up today's segment on fast forwarding inflation right now. Is it going to get better? I don't believe so. I believe the Fed is coming in fierce. It'll start slow, but it's going to get fierce, particularly since the market is now uh, mirroring what's happening in the economy, the stock market, that is, and that people are getting ready to see their savings vanish. Okay. And I wish I could give you some advice. I did give you some advice. That's what I told my radio show listeners. I'm like, don't you dare say I didn't tell you, and I'm going to tell you as my television listeners, don't you dare say I didn't tell you, because I did. And the answer is going to be, again, coming together as a family, making decisions on how things are going to work. Uh, if you don't have a family, coming together with other people that have your similar um, cultural views and beginning to work together to survive, including your own little businesses, marketplace on Facebook and eBay, whatever you need to sell, now's the time to do it and to get yourself some cash. I'm Michelle Graves. Inflation is a dog barking. And I'll talk to you soon. God bless all of you. You take care. Bye-bye.